Oh, okay. There we go. So the print behind me uh, is a photo I took in Canada uh, two years ago. Um, I'll, I'll share more maybe uh, in the uh, uh, discussion following it, but this was back in Canada. Uh, had some very nice clouds that day. Um, so I managed to capture an interesting moment and uh, recently turned it into an aluminum print. Um, so Jake asks, what JavaScript libraries are used to create the dashboard? Um, so in terms of JavaScript libraries, we have, um, we used ethers.js uh, for interacting with MetaMask since we do also support local signers. Um, but in addition to that, um, we used omg.js for some interactions with the omg network though. Uh, we are working on integrating uh, as much functionality as possible directly into multibass for interacting with the omg network. Um, we used big number.js, which was required for in formatting some of these, some, some data, um, as we passed it between OMG and, and the front end. Uh, but other than that, I mean, it's just pretty bare bones. Um, oh, in terms of the UI, we used Vuedify. Uh, view.js and Vuedify uh, for the front end components and Axios uh, for um, post requests. Uh, well, post, get, basically REST API interactions, we used Axios. Uh, but altogether, not very JavaScript heavy, uh, which I think is um, one of the benefits, again, of using a middleware solution as I, I'm not up to date on the current status of web 3 js but last i checked it was absurdly bloated right like i think at least five megabytes altogether um and there, there really is no need for that bloated of a library um so alex asks in your experience will those mods be able to use a dashboard without some training it's a very good question um so for day-to-day -day interactions I would say yes. Um, everything is um, set up and available once initialized, I should say. Everything is available through this dashboard. Um, for day-to-day -day flow, you would simply select the distribution contract you interact you want to interact with. Under the distribution tab, you would call advanced next round and mint some new points. Then you would call approve. Uh, so approve the ERC20 vault to withdraw uh, the freshly minted points on your behalf. And then you would call deposit uh, to deposit those freshly minted points into the OMG network. Then you'd simply move on to the distribution uh, section and su submit all the recipients and the amounts you wish to. I uh, just realized I'm not sharing my screen. My apologies. Yeah, so once again, under the distribution tab, you would mint new points by calling advanced next round. Then you would approve those points to be withdrawn you would deposit those points into the ERC20 vault, and then you would distribute. So for day-to-day -day interactions, it's all quite centralized, and you, you could learn how to do this um, through, I think, a fairly concise document. Uh, there are certainly some optimizations we could have made. Uh, for example, I think advanced next round is a little more complicated than it should be. Um, I think we could simplify this to simply how many new points do you want to mint um, but again we we were working under a pretty tight time constraint so um we we strive to uh, get you know 95 percent of the way there um in the designated time period so in summary alex um i think with minimal training um someone who is savvy enough to be a moderator on a subreddit 
um, should be able to operate this, this dashboard with, with minimal, minimal friction. Um, so I'm seeing another question here. What did you do to get type transaction implemented on Multipass? Any details on how this works on the back end? Um, so I assume this refers to basically um, signing type transactions. Uh, so for those who are not too familiar, um, OMG network transactions are of a certain format, uh, which is not the same as a normal Ethereum transaction. Um, OMG uses, I believe it's EIP 712, um, so typed data. Um, and in order to uh, allow for these um, transactions to be signed and submitted by the back end, uh, we had to implement uh, the necessary steps to uh, f format uh, or receive transactions of this format. Um, but other than that, we're essentially just signing a hash and returning a signature in a similar manner to how we would with an Ethereum transaction. So it's really just a matter of um, getting, you know, getting the data from point A to point B in, in the correct shape and form um, to allow it to be signed uh, with fairly typical methods, um, SecP, 256K1, and so on. So Erica asks, how did you get to speed, um, get up to speed on OMG integration? Uh, so the OMG network is um, kind enough to provide a quite comprehensive uh, developer docs, um, I believe available at docs.omg.network.com. Should be quite apparent from from the uh, from the homepage. Yeah, so here we go. Developers documentation. Yeah, docs.omgnet.network.com. And this basically provided us with all the information we needed um, from the Plasma contracts, um, which I previously mentioned, uh, the Plasma framework, the payment exit game, uh, the F vault, ERC vault, um, in addition to the block explorer, right, which is uh, quite helpful for debugging transactions or really just making sure that they, you know, hit the network um, that they were received by the watcher. Um, and also we have uh, API references for the OMG watcher, uh, which is essentially the node you communicate with uh, to, to interact with the OMG network. Um, and I think this in conjunction with the OMG JS, um, API was, was the most useful, um, set of references for, uh, getting up to speed with the OMG network. In conjunction with that, um, working with, uh, the very talented team um, of the OMG network, uh, collaborating through Slack, through, through all sorts of, um, collaborative platforms, uh, we were, we were able to, you know, bring two, you know, it's like plugging two things in together. Right. Um, so they're working on their side from the OMG network and where we are working sort of from the Ethereum slash middleware side. Um, and we are able to collaborate quite efficiently. Um, so real fake Doris asks, you mentioned the enterprise wallet is being used for paying for the deployments. Can you show the back end from the enterprise point of view? Um, paying for the deployment. So yeah, paying, paying, um, the enterprise wallet, 
um, is used to sign and submit transactions uh, instead of MetaMask. So rather than um, having MetaMask pop up, ask you, do you approve this transaction to be sent? Uh, instead, we're just making an API call um, to, to MultiBass. And I forgot to mention this earlier, but you can see here, um, everything we're doing through the front end is just an API call, right? Um, so by clicking send method, oh, something wrong there, but by clicking send method, we uh, would uh, be doing the equivalent of this um, API call. And here you see the two arguments as specified above. We have the gas price, we have the from address, which is the HSM, the enterprise wallet, and the signer, which again is the HSM, um, HSM wallet. But really all we're doing is calling post on this endpoint. So contracts, distribution method, advanced next round with these methods, uh, sorry, with these parameters. Um, so I'm a little confused by what you mean by show the backend from the enterprise point of view. Uh, Multibass integrates with some cloud providers um, that, that offer uh, HSMs. Uh, these cloud providers uh, basically have the hardware, have the infrastructure to store private keys on your behalf securely, right? Um, in, the, in, in the similar manner that uh, a bank would store its integration keys. Um, so for all intents and purposes, it's as secure as any hot wallet really is. Um, and it allows for uh, D apps to operate without MetaMask, essentially. All the Web3 functionality can be coming in directly from the middleware layer. Um, all the interactions with a smart contract can be handled by an HSM wallet rather than having to get the user to install MetaMask, um, you know, initialize it with a 12 word or 24 word mnemonic phrase and trust that the user saves that somewhere, right? Like all of this can be abstracted away to simply providing the user with an HSM wallet uh, that they can use for interaction with, with the D app. Great. Uh, thank you for the questions, everyone. You were able to answer all the good ones. Uh, yeah. So thank you so much again, Dan. We're just going to move forward to the fireside chat. So do stay on screen.